Okay, this uh, video will be a short demo of how to create contours from point cloud data with Global Mapper. Um, for this demo, I'll be using LiDAR data for city of Cape Town area. We've got LiDAR data for the whole city of Cape Town and um, Global Mapper is able to import all of that data, although it, it does take a considerable amount of time to load all of that data. Uh, I will only be loading this one tile in for, for this demonstration. It's about 40 megabytes. Um, when you click on open, it will you will be presented with the, the loading dialog box. Uh, over here, you've got a bunch of settings. I'm not going to go into detail in this video. I'll, I'll add links to the description of the video that explains all the settings in a more detail. But uh, just a quick overview, you can uh, import it as a point cloud. You can uh, directly create the elevation grid if you would like to do that. If you already know beforehand how your elevation grid would, uh, should look like. Um, in this case, I'm just going to import it as a point cloud and demonstrate the elevation grid separately. There's a bunch of other features on how to limit what is loaded, um, what classification to import. And in this case, we are just going to import a ground classification. So I'll click OK, and it will start reading the LiDAR file. OK, so the data is loaded. As you can see, it's uh, six and a half million points. Um, these points are don't have color values. Um, depending on what area you are in the city of Cape Town, the LiDAR points is in color. Um, you can change the way it displays the data uh, based on the heights. But uh, you can also have a 3D view of the data if you would like to see it in that way. As you can see, that's what it looks like. OK. So the second um, step in this workflow is to then generate a elevation grid. So once again, I'm not going to go through all of the details. Um, but as you can see here, you can set the units to meters in South Africa. The method we will be using is a triangulation method. Here you can filter your, um, your LiDAR classification points again. Over here, you can determine what grid spacing you would like. Um, this elevation model to be. And uh, for this purpose, let's say we make it one meter. Uh, the LiDAR data is much more concentrated in certain points than in other points. But if you make it a specified grid, you must just understand that there will be interpolation in certain areas and there will be simplification in, in different areas. So that is important to understand when you are creating these grids and supplying people with this data. OK, here's your, your no data threshold that you can set. You can uh, do things like ignore zero values, etc. You can also create this um, grid to be in tiles. So if you have a very large data set, I would say even this is quite a large data set for a program like a CAD program to use. And in, in that case, you know, you can split it up into a tiles and then supply the person with tiles, which they can load in in the specific areas they require the data. Then the grid bounds is um, gives you the ability to um, only process the data in a specific area of the of the data you are looking at. So for example, I can draw a box only in this area, and then it will only generate the, the DEM in that area. Uh, you can also, if you have another shape loaded in here, which maybe is some, maybe a farm portion or something like that, you can crop it to that specific extent. But for this demo, we will just use all of the data and we will create a one meter thin uh, elevation grid. 
So we'll let that run quickly. Um, obviously, these areas um, where there's no data, I'm not sure if this is on the coast or something, but uh, there will be triangulated points over there. All right, so there is your elevation grid loaded and you can see it has quite a nice level of detail at a one by one meter grid. Um, and we can view that in 3D again. Sorry, let me just uh, switch off the points. And um, yeah, there you go. There's your grid. You can also, uh, it basically buffers the data as you load it in. You can change uh, stuff like your your exaggerated heights uh, if you're on a very flat area or just want to look at the data in a different way. All right, so let's just zoom to the whole extent. Okay, so from this point, you can then create your contours. This is the contour generation dialog. Uh, over here, you specify the interval. Let's say we want 10 meter contours. Oh, this is the way it displays the contours. It's quite nice. It, it has a minor and a major contour. So we'll, we'll leave it at five and 10. Over here is your range where the contours will be generated from. This will automatically be generated based on the, the lowest and highest point of your loaded data. Over here, you can resample the resolution of the contours. If you want it more coarse than what it was from your elevation grid. So your elevation is obviously one by one meter. You can change this to a, a two by two meter. It will just give you less detailed contours depending on the size of the area. There's uh, quite a bit more options here, which I'm again, not going to go into detail, but for example, you can discard closed line court contours shorter than a specific uh, distance. So if you've got some strange anomalies in your data, which would create small little circular high points in your contours, you can then delete them by uh, first running this and then measuring how long they are. Say they are all less than five meters in length, you can eliminate them that way. You've got your simplification of the contours, which is obviously a concept that you will need to understand when generating contours. You've got your tiling. Uh, once again, this will split the contours up into tiles. Everything you do in Global Mapper has these two last tabs where you can split the data into tiles and you can also define a box or a specific extent, whether it be a shape or a square, whatever, uh, for this tool to run and generate your specific output. So let's just run the contours on the whole extent on 10 meters. And um, this operation can take a lot of time. Uh, Global Mapper is not limited uh, software wise. It is only limited hardware wise. So. If you have a very fast PC, it will handle a lot of data and it will, the processing power will be much bigger. In any case, here you can see the contours that has been generated from the surface. Um, you can see the, the major and minor contours. You know, if I maybe zoom into this area, you can see what I was talking about. If you want to eliminate stuff like that, you can use some of the settings. Um, but that's, that is the contours generated from the surface. And from this point in the, the workflow, you can go and you can go to layer and you can go to export. You want to export the generated contours and there is quite a wide variety of file types that you can export it to. One being DWG, so it will export it directly to a drawing file 
Uh, you can export it to a raster, you can export it to vector formats, you can export it to shape files. And this program has a lot of uh, file formats that it supports. And that is the short demonstration of how you generate contours from point files in Global Mapper.